you know, I'd like to do a little study on our sin and God's mercy. And, and to set this up, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between interpretation and application and what you and I should be doing with our minds during the day as Christians. And I want to start by going to Deuteronomy, setting the stage for this little sharing. And here in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, you and I are going to get God's heart from God's mouth, if you will, about how he thinks we should approach him, approach godliness, the things of God, the Bible. He says in verse 4 of Deuteronomy 6, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God, Yahweh is one, great truth, one God. Love Yahweh your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Then he says, these commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Now, he doesn't mean literally, he means we're supposed to take them into our heart and, and make them our own. He says, verse 7, impress them on your children. By the way, if, if you're a parent and you have children, this is very much a job of yours. So many parents, I think, uh, want to make sure their kids are in the right Sunday school. Well, if you're a parent, you need to be providing that Christian education. Here God says, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. We're supposed to be talking about the things of God all the time. Tie them as symbols on your hand. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, this was long before the traditions evolved about putting God's word in little boxes and tying them on your, your forehead or whatever. In fact, it's kind of interesting. I just recently went to a meeting with a young woman and she had writing on the back of her hand to remind her of things and whatever. And that's what God is saying. <laughs> He's saying, look, I, I want you to think about this stuff all the time. In Psalm, Psalm 1, in verse 2, here's a man that says, the man delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law, on God's law, he meditates day and night. So you and I are to learn lessons from the Word of God. Not just what is written, but that we would think about it. And so in light of our sin and God's mercy, I'd like to talk a little bit, little bit about Adam and Eve and the fall. Now, if we start in Genesis chapter 2, God starts right away, immediately after he creates Adam. And, and why did he create mankind? Why did he create us? Because he loves us. He wants us to love him. He wants to fellowship with us. And yet, it's just like with, with my little grandchild, you know, there's certain things, you, just in the nature of life, woven into life, there are things that you don't do and things that you do. I mean, we have to teach our grandchild what is hot, what is not hot, don't go sticking the butter knife in the electrical socket, that kind of thing. And here's God, and he speaks to his creation whom he loves. He speaks to Adam whom he loves. And he says, now look, I put this tree in the midst of the garden. We don't know the purpose that God put it there. It's certainly God's nature. It says God does not tempt man. So we know God didn't simply put the tree there to tempt Adam. There's, you know, even things that are harmful, like, like electrical sockets are harmful to our, our grandchild, but you don't get rid of them. You train the grandchild and you cover them up and you, you put in protections. And so God has the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden for a reason we don't really understand at this time. But it certainly wasn't just there to tempt Adam. And then so God said, now look, you know, don't eat this tree in Genesis 2.17. Don't eat of it. In, in the day you eat of it, you will die. And that's God saying, Adam, hands off. Don't mess with this. In the day you eat of it, you will die. Problem. <laughs> it's like putting up a no fishing sign by a lake. Here's Adam and Eve. Sure enough, Eve goes and, and eats of the tree. And Adam eats of the tree also. So now, now we've got a problem. God made a promise that in the day you eat, you're, you're going to die. Now Adam and Eve knew that they, that they sinned, that they, they had done something that was, was gravely dangerous to them. And, and frankly, their eyes were open to evil. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings in uh, Genesis 3-7. They make fig leaves. Then God shows up and has a conversation with them and says, what you've done is really serious. 
and it was really serious. What was the Word of God about the situation? The Word of God was they were going to die that day. And so now, now we have a chance to see God in His grace, in His mercy, in His love fight for His creation. Because He could have just said, well, I, I warned them, and they ate, and so now they're going to die. But we have a God that fights for us more than that. You know, our, our God is not just a cold, dispassionate God sitting behind a bunch of laws and rules and regulations, uh, willing to just, you know, sweep us out of the way if we sin. Even when we sin, even when we stand against Him, it says in Romans 5 that when we were hostile to God, even in that condition, He sent His Son to reconcile us. And so now we see God fight for Adam and Eve. And you can just see the wheels of God's mind turning. What can I do now to fight for my creation? Because Adam and Eve didn't die that day. And we have to ask ourselves, what happened? And there's just this one little verse inserted in Genesis chapter 3. And it says in Genesis 3.21, Yahweh God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Just that one little verse. He made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. What's the interpretation of the verse? What we just read. He made garments of skin. Is there, is there an application here? Is there a greater application that we can learn from? Many, many wonderful applications if you and I will do what Deuteronomy says. And just talk about this stuff. Think about it. Meditate on it. Kick it around a while. So many great things. First of all, we, we see God's mercy that Adam and Eve indeed would have died had God not intervened. They would have. But what God did is he killed some animals. He killed some animals and he covered Adam and Eve with skins. And it's just like you and I read Romans 6.23 and it says the wages of sin is death. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I've sinned. Here's the word of God. The wages of sin is death. Why am I not going to die? Why are you not going to die if we accept the sacrifice that's been killed for us? And just like God said, you know what? I'm going to intervene here with my mercy. I'm going to kill an animal instead of Adam and Eve dying. And I'm going to cover their sin with the death of an animal and our sin is paid for by the death of Jesus Christ. And so God killed animals in his mercy and something did die that day, just not Adam and Eve. The wages of sin is death and something will die for my sin, just not me, Jesus Christ did. Another thing I think that the animal skins point to, you could make the case and say Adam and Eve already had coverings. They, are, they made themselves leaves, it says in Genesis chapter 2. They sewed fig leaves together and made coverings. Adam and Eve already had coverings, but God is going to make them a covering of skin. You know, there's an interesting interpretation or interesting application here. The interpretation is simple. God covered them with sin, skins. God covered them with skins. But the application, you know, sin is a lot more serious and a lot more permanent than we would like. You know, little fig leaf coverings are going to rot and fall off pretty quick. But, but sin is serious in the eyes of God. It's, it's, it's a big problem, and it needs a permanent covering. And God, in making skins for Adam and Eve, covered them in a much more permanent fashion. And Jesus Christ, in dying for us, covers our sins once and for all. Absolutely. So in this one little verse record about God making garments of skin for Adam and Eve, we see God's love in fighting for Adam and Eve. We see God's mercy in not giving them the judgment they deserved, but providing for them. And we also get a glimpse into how serious the problem of sin is. When you and I sin, it's not some little thing that we can throw a couple leaves on ourselves and we're fine. We need God's permanent covering if we are going to not suffer the wages of sin being death. And thankfully God has provided that permanent covering for us in Jesus Christ. 
When we accept Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for our sin, our sins are cleansed, and you and I are guaranteed to have everlasting life. We accept Christ by taking him as our Lord and believing that God raised him from the dead. It's easy to do. <laughs> Don't walk around with leaf coverings for your sin thinking that's going to do the job. Accept God's provision for your sin and live forever. God bless you.